is gonna be cool. We're gonna check out my new favorite cooling unit in the history of the world ever. It's the NHD15 from Noctua. It's the successor to the NHD14. And they've improved on that model in almost every way. It's not insanely better as far as the numbers go, but it's better enough that this one gives all the closed loop or the closed, uh, yeah, the closed loop cooling units. It gives them all a run for their money. So let's go ahead and talk about what we have here. We have one hell of a freaking huge um, heat sink. And there are two stacks here, and they've widened out the heat pipes. There's six heat pipes in total. They've widened those out uh, to really uh, give you the best heat dissipation possible, according to their science anyway. And they've also raised it up a little bit because some of the, the fins on some of the, the fancy RAM, because I mean, let's face it, if you get one of these, you've probably got some fancy RAM. I know you guys wearing it around as a grill, you know. It, it'll work with RAM up to 32 millimeters high. It's pretty good. Uh, they've also made the fans a little bigger. Uh, they're now 150 millimeters as opposed to 140 millimeters. However, they're in a 140 millimeter enclosure. They just look a little funky. Um, and uh, the, the speed on these is the minimum, 300 RPM. Uh, and then it goes up to, um, I think, 1200 with the included low noise adapter. So that's kind of cool. They, you know, stop the noise. You, you hook up the adapter, plug that in between the fans and, uh, you know, your CPU fan headers uh, on your motherboard. But if you do not leave those plugged in, it'll go all the way up to 1500. So it, they really let you decide if you want low noise or high performance. And I don't even know why they include it because the noise is completely like not even there. Even with an overclock system, it's just so freaking quiet. Now we have two included. The, the, the model number is uh, NFA15. And what makes them so freaking silent? Well, if you look at the actual fan blades themselves on the uh, the suction side, they have some flow acceleration channels to help direct the the you know the airflow, and that is going to improve the acoustics. The uh, acoustics, the acoustics. Also, if you look on the inside of the housing, you'll see some uh, micro channels um, and, and some some tiny little like just bumps and structures and lines and all these fancy things that they have technical names for. But it's basically just helping to direct the wind and also break up some of the the the, uh, well, the, the noise making um, parts of the wind. That's totally not scientific, but it makes it super quiet. As far as uh, socket compatibility goes, it works with pretty much all the 1150X stuff from uh, Intel, AMDs, uh, AM2, AM2+, AM3, AM3+, works with all that stuff, FM, uh, FM1, uh, FM2, so it works with all those, 2011-3, 2011-0, so, Works with um, just about everything. Uh, with the FM2, of course, you have the backplate required. And um, they're, I mean, they're, as far as their mounting goes, I think it's the best in the industry. I, and uh, I wish everyone would just, just steal it and start using it because it would make my life a lot easier when I'm testing multiple heat sinks. There's some other good ones out there, but Noctua is by far the easiest. And as with all their other products, it just seems to be the most well thought out thing out there. As far as mounting this in your system, you do have two of those NFA15 fans. I would probably put one in front of the stack, one in the middle of the stack, and have the back stack empty, um, close to you know one of your outtakes, like another fan that's mounted on the physical case itself. That would probably be the best airflow scenario because you have air coming through and then air being all the hot air being sucked out of the back. But you know if if it doesn't fit that way, uh, I know that on some motherboards, if your 16-speed PCI Express slot is all the way up in the top and you're running your uh, you know your heatsink in that configuration. It's probably going to smack the side of the, uh, the the graphics card, and you do not want that. So, uh, you want to make sure that it, either you know, you move your graphics card down to a different slot if your motherboard will work that way, or you're going to want to make sure that you turn this a different direction. You can turn this in a different direction. The way I just mentioned is the best way to do it. But if you turn it into a different direction, uh, it's going to move a lot of air, and it's going to help keep some of your components cool. So that's just another thing to think about. So for our test rig, we use the EVGA X99. Uh, this is the classified motherboard. And we have um, 16 gigabytes of Corsair DDR4 memory. We have a Kingston HyperX 3K uh, SSD. Um, and um, we have um, just all kinds of stuff. You guys can click on the link and it'll take you to a list of everything we use to test this. We use the Intel 5960X because it's the crazy uh, you know, CPU right now. And I wanted to see what we could do with it. We ran it at stock. And then we also overclocked it all the way up to 4.3 gigahertz. At stock, running a 100% load for about 15 minutes. Uh, the minimum was 37 degrees. The max was 47 degrees, but the average was 46.7. It uh, didn't spike too much really in there, but you know, 47 degrees was the max at the stock. All right, running it overclocked uh, all the way up to 4.3 gigahertz. 
You guys can see the minimum was 48. Uh, the max was 76. The average was uh, 69.4. I always look for the spikes. Um, the average is nice, but the spikes are what's going to fry your system, especially if you're getting close to the T-junction max. Thankfully, though, uh, we're nowhere near the uh, T-junction max on this. So no big deal. Now let's talk about noise. Um, it's 35, around 35, 34, 35 decibels. Uh, just what I do is I set the uh, decibel meter right here on the table. Um, and it's like 35 degrees, or 35 degrees, 35 decibels at idle. And then under a, a full load, it's um, 39 decibels. That's like less than leaves rustling or whatever. I decided to see how uh, much louder it would be if I cranked it up to 100%, and it did hit 42. It rarely runs at 100%. It generally runs at 60 or 70, possibly 80% under full load, even with the overclock. So, you know, I've been saying this is almost as good or possibly better than some of the closed loop cooling units out there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my money right here in my mouth and chew on it for a while. I'm going to put this against the H105 from Corsair, and I've also got a couple of Cooler Master units in the house. We're going to put all those together and just see how they all stack up. So stay tuned for that. Be sure to subscribe to all of our channels because you guys are awesome. And, and we're, maybe, we're, maybe we're awesome. I don't know. You guys let us know what you think. I'll cry myself to sleep if you say one bad thing in YouTube. I'll do it. All right, guys. Uh, see you guys in the funny papers. Is that what they used to say in the 20s? I have no ending. Just close it sometimes. Please. As far as socket compatibility, his beer is making me burp. He don't to match and, you know, trying try to... Hey, everybody. Oh, shit. Is this peaking?